All right, <clears throat> so let's look at this uh, test three review to prepare you for test three for topics. Uh, and so the first one is are these <clears throat> these um, rotation problems. Um, one gear touching another gear, one gear that's connected by a pulley to another gear, maybe this one that's one gear that is bolted onto the middle of another gear, um, maybe that something linearly is coming off of, of the edge of it, like this one. So starting from rest, pulley is rotated with a constant angular acceleration of 1.8 radians per second counterclockwise. So um, is it talking about the inner? Is it talking about the outer? Actually, both of them, either of them, right? They only have one uh, angular uh, information. So the angular acceleration <coughs> is 1.8 radians per second, uh, and it said clockwise. Awesome. Uh, and also, you know, angular acceleration is the alpha, 1.8 radians per second squared. Uh, calculate the acceleration, velocity, and change in position of block A after block B has risen 100 millimeters. <coughs> and they gave me information about... Um, the pulley. So, uh, <clears throat> one of the first things about these problems is, <clears throat> all right, is it a constant acceleration problem or not? This is constant acceleration. <clears throat> I can use any of those constant acceleration equations. I can use the constant angular acceleration equations if I'm going to be looking at the pulley, uh, but I can also use the constant linear acceleration equations if I'm looking at block B, or the constant linear acceleration equations if I'm looking at block a, um, and you could do the, the bulk of your math either at A, or at the pulley, or at B. Uh, just kind of trying to kind of think about what you're given, what you're asked to find. You, you're asking to find things about A, uh, but you are given this information about B. You are given this information about the angular um, acceleration of the pulley. So... <coughs> <clears throat> there are a number of you know things ways you could you could do this and and we'll kind of walk through it a little bit um touch and go we'll see okay <clears throat> now it wants to know all of this stuff after block b has risen 100 millimeters right after block b has risen 100 millimeters it wants to know some stuff <clears throat> i know what i can do is i can take this 100 millimeters and I can figure out, okay, what theta did that turn my pulley? So that's the first thing I'm going to answer is <clears throat> if block B rose 100 millimeters, what angle theta did that move? How can I find that angle, <clears throat> that arc length, right? If this goes up 100, <clears throat> then it twists and this arc length is 100. So I'd say S <clears throat> equals r theta. The 100 equals an r of 90. <clears throat> so what theta did everything twist? <clears throat> everything twisted 1.11 radians. 1.11 radians. <clears throat> so now, that was like the inner angle of twist, but the outer angle of twist <clears throat> angle twist is also 1.11, right? The outer <clears throat> pulley also moves 1.11. Don't try to <clears throat> convert the inner angular displacement to the outer angular displacement. The outer one moves 1.11 as well. All right, so now I can bet we could think about, okay, what, what does that mean happens to, to point A? Well, the inner moved 1.11 radians, the outer also moved that 1.11 <clears throat> radians. So <clears throat> we can ask ourselves, okay, what is the distance right here? What is the distance right here that this moved <clears throat> if, it, if it rotates 1.11 radians? <clears throat> so I'm, now I'm looking at the S on the outer edge S on the outer okay now, <coughs> sorry let's think about this the <coughs> angular displacement theta for the inner is the same as angular displacement for the outer but this arc length <coughs> this linear information for the inner is going to be different for this 
<coughs> arc length for the outer. Let's find the arc length for the outer. S equals R theta. And why, why are they different? They're different <coughs> not because they have a different theta, but they have a different R, right? <coughs> so S would be if I've got an R of 200 millimeters and a theta 1.11 <coughs> radians, this would be 222 <coughs> millimeters. 222 millimeters. <coughs> so that is the answer for change in position of block A. <coughs> Whoops, sorry. <coughs> change in position of block A. Okay. Now, <coughs> the velocity of block A. I could find the velocity block after block A has risen. <coughs> Sorry, goodness. Find the velocity of block A after block B has risen 100 millimeters. <coughs> but actually, uh, before I get there, <coughs> this might have been the easiest to begin with. I, pr I probably could have started <coughs> with the easiest one to begin with. Find the acceleration. If I have a constant angular acceleration of 1.8, <clears throat> then what does that make the <clears throat> the acceleration of block A? It didn't really matter <clears throat> what B has done because this is the constant angular acceleration. This is the angular acceleration when B has risen 0, when B has risen 50, when B has risen 100. <clears throat> it's a constant throughout this problem. <clears throat> so all I'm doing is converting <clears throat> the angular acceleration of 1.8 to the <clears throat> linear acceleration, really the A tangential right here. A tangential right here. <clears throat> All right, so <coughs> A equals R alpha. I'm looking at the outer pulley, so an R of 200. Alpha of 1.8. <clears throat> 360 millimeters per second squared would be the acceleration of A at the beginning, at the end, <clears throat> any time throughout this problem. Okay, now the hardest part <clears throat> is if I am given the acceleration <clears throat> and I want to know the velocity. This is a constant, so I can use any of those constant acceleration equations. <clears throat> and so I could use the constant acceleration equations at B, and then <clears throat> I would kind of need to jump that 1.8 to B before I begin. <clears throat> but if I use them at B, then I would need to jump them from B to the pulley, and then from the pulley to A. Um, the easiest probably would have actually been looking ahead... <coughs> would have been to look at all of these at A. But I'm going to look at B. I mean, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to look at the pulley. Look at the wheel. Look at the rotating <coughs> disc. I'm going to look at the rotating disc. I'm going to get the angular velocity of the rotating disc. <clears throat> then I'm going to jump that angular velocity to the linear velocity at A. So, <clears throat> I could look at any three of those <clears throat> constant acceleration equations. I think the one that would give me the information that I want to know, I want to know the final <coughs> angular velocity. I know the initial angular velocity started from rest and two alpha theta and I know the theta and I know the alpha. <coughs> so, this this, I know the initial angular velocity, the constant acceleration, the theta, I can find omega final. It started at zero. <clears throat> omega final squared equals two. Alpha of 1.8, theta <clears throat> 1.11, right? I needed to convert <clears throat> that moving 100 millimeters to theta. What theta did that correspond to? It corresponds to a theta of 1.11. Don't forget to take the square root. The omega final would be, comes out to a, a nice even 2. 
radians per second. <clears throat> but that's not the answer. What is the velocity of A? Well, the velocity of A would be the velocity <clears throat> right here on the edge. What is the velocity on the edge? <clears throat> that velocity on the edge would be our omega. That velocity on the edge would be 200 <clears throat> times 2, 400 millimeters per second is the velocity of A. Velocity of A. All right. <clears throat> this was a constant acceleration problem. Be able to do them if they're not constant. You have to do integrals and derivatives. This was one of those where one pulley was bolted, <coughs> connected to another pulley. Uh, what did that mean? All the <coughs> angular information was the same. This alpha, there's no alpha inner and alpha outer. There's just alpha of the whole thing. <coughs> also be able to handle pulleys that are connected by belts or ropes. Be able to handle things that are hanging off right here. Okay, <clears throat> and so I use constant <coughs> angular a constant angular acceleration equation just to find this velocity part of the problem. Sometimes <coughs> the other parts of the problem, and I, I'll be honest with you, I was about to try. I was trying to make it too hard. Uh, sometimes the to finding the acceleration is is just taking that acceleration, no no equations, just taking that acceleration and <coughs> jumping it to the acceleration on the edge taking that change in position of block A, jumping that information to the change in position of block B. Okay?